You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. According to, according to the stranger at the Pentagon, which is a, a guy who worked at the Pentagon, Frank Strangers, he worked at the Pentagon and has a lot of images too as well, verified images. There was a Venubian, a Vesuvian, if you want to call it, Venubian, Vesuvian, whatever his name was, uh, 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 the guy's name was uh, Valiant, Val Valiant is his name, Val Valiant, and he came here with a crew and he met with people at the White House and he actually stayed in a place inside the Pentagon for two years, according to the book. The, book. the book is called The Stranger at the Pentagon. He came here to tell the governments of the world that they had, we can cure all diseases, eradicate diseases, grow crops, and move towards a green society. And they asked if uh, they had any, uh, asked if he had any military, anything for the military. And he told them no. And uh, they consulted with him for two years before he left, and uh, they, they declined the offer for the information from him. It was a very strange situation. But there's pictures of him at the Pentagon, and this book is a very famous book. It's called uh, Strange Red at the Pentagon. Amazing book. I think it's uh, and the guy really has the credentials. He worked there. Um, amazing information. So is it real? Is it true? You know, I don't know, but it's just kind of interesting. Here's another structure on Venus. <laughs> this structure is, is very tall. Uh, I estimate it to be probably close to uh, a mile in length, you know, up from the bottom of the base. It's kind of hard to see because it's foggy down there but on the screen, but it kind of goes up like this. And uh, it's even got what appears to be some kind of windows or something on it, but that's on Venus. What is that doing there? It should just be barren sand and rocks, according to the official report. Mercury. The makeup of Mercury's atmosphere is 42% uh, oxygen. Mercury, you know, the closest planet to the sun that's supposed to have no atmosphere or nothing. Yeah, the Mercury Messenger mission just reported that it's 42% oxygen, 29% sodium, 22% hydrogen, 6% helium, and 0.5% potassium, which means you can breathe there. Also, they discovered billions of tons of liquid water on Mercury. I started looking into Mercury and trying to figure out what was up there. And this is what I found, a structure. That structure is a very strange structure, about a mile wide. And the tower, what looks like a tower here on the far corner, is about a mile high. And it's backed up to what looks like a water reservoir. They've already admitted that there are billions of tons of liquid water on Mercury. And also, there's a lot of these structures on Mercury that don't appear to be part of the surrounding terrain. What are they doing here? Mercury is the planet of who? Who owns Mercury? Who was called Mercury on Earth? So, that's his planet. That's his planet, Mercury. So how did they get the, did they get the oxygen? Did they, have like, did they have like plants at one time? Or that... Earth still has plants. <laughs> yeah. 42% oxygen? Earth only has about 21% oxygen. What? Really not. You really don't very good question. You said, what about the temperature and the spin? So, Mercury is very close to the sun, which would make it a very hot planet, theoretically. However, Mercury spins, it rotates on its axis once every 61 Earth days. So, the majority of the planet is never in direct sunlight. And when you get closer to the poles, which are very rarely in sunlight, because obviously even on Earth, poles usually freeze up with ice, 
it gets much cooler and you have tons and tons or billions of tons according to NASA of liquid water, which is pretty amazing. So, so here's the... Essentially that on those northern and southern pole, the mercury life could be supported. I think that you can land on mercury and pop off your head, your, your astronaut hat and just start breathing, is my opinion. I could be wrong, but... <laughs> The Mars rover this week, the Mars rover team threw cold water on the hopes of finding organic molecules on Mars. But Thursday, NASA unveiled a discovery that kind of makes up for it. Cold water and organic molecules on Mercury. The findings come from NASA's MESSENGER probe, which has been orbiting Mercury since last year. The probe is focused on studying craters around the planet's North Pole, and what they found inside sounds pretty bizarre. Uh, we have very compelling evidence that uh, these regions are indeed filled uh, with water ice. That's right, ice on Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. The planet where surface temperatures can reach 700 Kelvin or 800 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt lead. Many people would likely say there's not a snowball's chance in hell that there's ice on Mercury. But it just turns out that at its North Pole, there are some places where the sun never shines. Because Mercury has no atmosphere, anywhere the sun doesn't shine can get hundreds of degrees below zero, like the planet's northern craters. The messenger team discovered a reflective material made up mostly of hydrogen in the craters. Water ice is the only substance that fits the bill. But hold on, they didn't just find water ice, they found small pockets of liquid water, with an unusually dark material forming a thin layer on top of the ice. And the most likely explanation? These are dark, organic, rich deposits. This organic material may be the same type of organic material that ultimately gave rise to life on Earth. That's right, organic material and liquid water on Mercury. How did it get there? The most likely explanation is that it came from comets that crashed into Mercury in our solar system's infancy. In fact, some scientists believe most of Earth's water and some of its organics arrived on our planet the same way. Now, to put the reins on the story, organic doesn't necessarily mean alive. The scientists say they don't expect atmosphereless Mercury to have any life on it. But the New York Times suggests maybe we could put some life there. The water <laughs> could also be. Crazy stuff. So they keep saying no atmosphere, right? However, they sent out the report after this video came out, 41% oxygen. Mm -hmm. Oxygen cannot survive without an atmosphere. The only way to have oxygen readings on a planet is if there's an atmosphere. So you see how they, they sidetrack you? 700 degrees Kelvin. Intriguing resource for people. Between the scorched equator and the frozen poles, temperatures on Mercury can be temperate, especially a few feet below the surface, an ideal location to build a colony. The scientists won't be able to confirm any of their findings until they send another probe capable of doing a little digging. In the meantime, an astronomer for Slate says the findings on Mercury could help us find life elsewhere. I don't think we'll find any life on Mercury, but what this says to me is that the basic ingredients of life can survive formidable circumstances. And that uh, but there's life out there everywhere. Yeah, I mean, everywhere, yeah. Confusion is a part of psychological warfare. Absolutely, I mean, that's the key. There really is, you know, yeah. a battle going on. Mm -hmm. so, Just drop these little tidbits mm -hmm. in between a very powerful piece of information mm -hmm. to keep you going, huh? Mm -hmm. And now you're trying to figure out what was just said, and now you go, <coughs> yeah, there's no life here. So. 700 degrees Kelvin was dropped in the conversation. Oh, right. nothing can survive. Oh, but we got this, yeah. we got ice. Oh, we got liquid water. Oh, we got right, right. oxygen. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just really crazy how they do it, and uh, but they do it because why? Knowledge of this ancient civilization uh, encompassing and taking over everything from, of course, Africa through the entire solar system is not wanted. <laughs> They don't want people to get too excited about a civilization stretching from Earth all the way through the solar system, mm -hmm. which overrides the understanding or meaning of what we've been taught to believe as God and saviors and all this stuff. The religious systems in America are worth trillions of dollars per year, so much more than the actual Silicon Valley. Matter of fact, the religious system just in America alone uh, makes more money, pulls in more money than all the Silicon Valley companies combined in one year. So imagine that religious system collapsing. Uh, you know, imagine people realizing that there could be other technology out there that could um, change life on this planet in a positive way and eradicate some of these arcane methods of collecting fuel like fossil fuel and things like that, coal and all this other ridiculous stuff, non-renewables.
you know, so in order for them to keep control of us and keep what they call their power and keep their revenue flow, what they do is they suppress information from us, keep us dumbed down, keep us in debt, keep us worrying about paying bills, keep us distracted. We got so much work to do, we can never look up this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of time it took me to look up the amount of stuff that I've dug into, an average person, they just, it's not that they wouldn't want to do it, they just can't physically do it. Kids, work, this, that, all these other, it's just, it's too much. It cost them a couple of wives. <laughs> yeah, it did, it did. And it's just, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, staying up for 10 hours with a mark, with a magnifying glass, looking over space images, you know, I mean, <laughs> Not that many people are going to do one centimeter at a time. I mean, not that many people are going to do that. And that's what it takes sometimes to find these things. And then to find a way to clean some of the images without editing it or making it or changing what's really there, sometimes that could take three days where you do a couple of hours a day just to touch it and dab it and make sure you, you know, you're not obfuscating anything or changing what could be there. And then sending it out to get looked at by other people to get peer reviewed and then getting. It's a lot, man. I mean, and to get 58,000 images done that way took a massive amount of work by 14 people. That's how it's, it's only 14 of us. You know, it took years, but a lot of work to done. So I'm looking forward to bringing that whole team on stage in, um, in the UK when I do the Eric Von Daniken event uh, in September of 2020. And as soon as I get the date for that event, I'll let you know. I have some of the marketing pieces, but there's no date yet set for the venue. They're waiting on the construction team to give them the official uh, time that they can actually uh, open it up. Um, so, yeah, I just want to see those. Uh... If you want to see some of the most amazing work from Martine Graney, one of our top anomaly hunters, she got anomaly hunter of the year uh, this year. You can go to Martian Genesis on Facebook, Martian Genesis, and request to be added to the group. Either myself or she'll add you. Um, this is what looks like to be some type of a bird type of a figure. That we like we don't like to say specifically what things are, just what they might look like. It's always a question mark. Just don't look like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a gigapan. So here's an example of a gigapan. Who made these words up? Because <laughs> <laughs> if y'all find it on Mars, who made it? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So Billy, the only the only thing we're sure about on Mars is the face, which is King Alalu. That that one we're sure about, right? As far as the Sumerian tablets go, right? King Alalu, yeah, yeah, the face on Mars. That's that's the only thing that's definitely mentioned. Right. Uh, the only other thing that's mentioned about Mars in the Sumerian tablets is the fact that uh, the atmosphere was getting harsh. Right. That was one of the things you mentioned. Yeah. That's what I meant to ask. Since they have sent all of these enhanced rovers to Mars. I think they destroyed it. The most recent image that we saw, it looks like somebody literally blew it up. I literally think that's what happened. I think they sent they something over there. You yeah, know, they just they always do something. They shoot noses over there too. They got it's gone, and that was a massive structure, but it's definitely completely collapsed. Find many tribes in Africa, for example, the Dogon tribe, and you also find um, natives in Peru that talk about beings that have been visiting them, and they are depicted as fish like mm -hmm. beings. Yeah, the normal. And they always land in late. So I was wondering, um, they talk about that their ancestors, were they at least being visited by uh, beings from the uh, from Sirius B? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that sometimes in, in, in translation, because Anunnaki is the, those who came from uh, from heaven to earth, right? Right. So, but is it sometimes that is it mixed up in history? Because I wonder, if it's the, is it the same beings or is it the different star rays that come from there? There's also been Orion more, but it's a little. They all come. They're all refugees. So what originally happened was there was a war in the Pleiadian star cluster. Yeah. And in the Pleiadian, uh, the Brahma weapon was used, which is a planetary destroyer. What's it called? The Brahma weapon. Brahma. It could destroy. Uh, it could destroy a man on three worlds. So it's, a, it's a planetary destroyer. It's a. Yeah. It's a Death Star. Literally.
Hi, I'm Billy Carson, researcher, speaker, and best-selling author of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I'm inviting you to join me on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv to enjoy hours of great programming, learn the secrets of ancient Egypt, unexplained structures on the moon and Mars, financial literacy, holistic and healthy lifestyles. Go now to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and get three days free. While there, you can enter to win a Rolls Royce. That's ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hi, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.